Hey guys, this is Professor Abud again, uh, live from Bali, Indonesia, and this week uh, we're going to go over Experiment 8, but before that I just want to remind you guys that we only have three labs left before your practical exam, so hopefully you have been paying attention. If you've got any questions on previous labs, just let me know, and uh, we can discuss the the details of each one. So this week we're going to go over elimination reactions and the objective this week is to dehydrate a cis-trans mixture of 2-methylcyclohexane to the respective alkenes and analyze the product by GC to find out what sort of percentages are yielded and see if that fits Zaitsev's rule. Um, so that's a lot of words, so let's break it down. So to dehydrate, so that just means to remove the, the, this hydroxyl functional group and turn it into a water group, a cis-trans mixture. So cis, and I've pulled up some nice pictures for you guys here, cis just means it's on the same size if it's drawn flat, and trans means it's on opposite sides, and here you have a nice three-dimensional model of cis and trans, so this one right here is a trans because you've got it going on opposite sides, one's facing up, one's facing down, and this one's cis because they're both kind of facing up. Um, so it's a mixture of two methyl, cyclo methyl cyclohexanol to their respective alkenes, and alkenes are just double bonded carbons, um, and analyze their GC product to determine if they adhere to Zaitsev's rule. And I pulled up Zaitsev's rule for you guys, all it means is that uh, when you've got a, a double bond, it's going to prefer to be on carbons that are bonded to more carbons as opposed to carbons that are not bonded to that many carbons. So in this case, we've got uh, this carbon right here is bonded to two other carbons, and this one right here is also bonded to two carbons, whereas this one, it's got one carbon that's bonded to two carbons, but this one on the end is only bonded to one carbon. So Zaitsev's rule just says that this one, this... Uh, this product right here is going to be more prevalent in your reaction. So let's just quickly go over uh, E1 and E2 type of um, reactions, elimination reactions or, or uh, substitution reactions. So if we've got a, a little molecule Y, and you've got, the, uh, this is a terribly drawn uh, molecule here, but you've got your little Y and your X is bonded to your red molecule. So the X in E1 substitution, the X just falls off, and so it has to do with the stability of cations, and that's why tertiary carbons are better than secondary. Um, and then, once you've got the cation, the Y molecule can bond. And in E2 reaction, oh, oh, there we go, here we go. In E2 reactions, on the, it's, it's kind of uh, the opposite. So here the Y needs to attach first, and then the X comes off. So, for those, the relative reaction weights are primary is better than secondary, and so on and so forth. So we went into that, hopefully you remember that from last lab. Um, if you've got any questions on that, talk to me. Um, and so, here, you know, we talk about some of this. Uh, but let's, let's talk about what we're actually going to be doing in lab. So here is our trans, uh, our cis and trans. So that what, what it means by cis trans is that about half of them are going to be cis, so this CH3 is going to be facing up, and the OH is also going to be facing up, and about half of them will be trans, so this CH3 will be facing up, and this OH down, or vice versa, the CH3 down, and the OH up. Um, and so what we expect to give, to get, is uh, more of this molecule, which has that, this carbon right here, that's, it's a tertiary carbon, because it's bonded to three carbons, and less of this guy, which has only which has no tertiary carbons on its double bond and way less way less one, less than one percent of this guy because he has got one carbon that is a primary carbon and so he just doesn't have anywhere to put those extra electrons whereas this tertiary carbon can share the electrons with with three other carbons okay so um, hopefully you guys have some time to read over a little bit of the of the mechanics of it um, but this essentially just explains what what's going to happen in the formation of each step and via what mechanism it's going to use. So, for example, here we have a, uh, a methyl cyclohexane being formed, and it kind of just shows the mechanism that it goes through, so from here and all the way into there. So look over these as we go through the lab, um, as these are probably the, you know, very important to understand, 
and they, you know, each one talks about how much yield it's going to be and why it has that specific yield. So if you have questions about that, the lab should answer most of them. So what are we actually going to do? So in a 50 milliliter round bottom flask, we're going to combine some of that methyl cyclohexanol molecule with some phosphoric acid and boiling chips. We're going to set up a sample, a little distillation, um, and that's going to be similar to last, you know, a couple weeks ago when we did distillation. Um, and we're essentially going to collect fractions in separate container if the mixture fractionates. And so if you remember from the distillation lab, fractionates means that they have completely distinct boiling points and usually you hit a plateau um, as you're boiling that specific uh, molecule off. So then we're going to, essentially once you've gotten all your fractions, and here it says I believe that you discard, um, yeah, so in either case a small amount of the, of the forerun and the last portion of the high boiling material should be discarded. Um, so that's just to get rid of small impurities that you may have. Um, and then we're going to transfer them to a funnel and dry them. So we're going to dry them with brine first and get rid of the aqueous, uh, lower aqueous layer. Then we're going to pour it into an Erlenmeyer flask and add anhydrous sodium sulfate, which just is going to dry it further, and let it stand while it dries. And if your sample is cloudy at this point, it means you still have water, so you need to continue drying it. If it is nice and clear, you can go ahead and weigh your product and try to figure out your percent yield. And finally, decant it and submit it for GC analysis. And so we'll give you guys back your, your analysis, and you can then you know, figure out what, what you did, what you had, what you got, um, and compare that to Zaitsev's rule. And finally, we're going to do a little test for alkenes. And remember, that's just all that means is that there's a double bond. And there's a really nice picture of this test down here. So essentially any sort of double bonds that you have are going to be turned into single bonds and they're going to create magnesium oxide which is going to be a brown solid. Um, so here it just says, you know, add a little bit of that distillate to a 0.5 milliliters of 0.5% aqueous potassium permanganate solution and swirl and see if you get any color change and any brown solid. Um, and then it talks about hazard disposal, just remember to to put things in the correct bins and let me know if you have any questions. All right, guys, so hopefully that prepared you for this week's lab, and I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.